Okay, so the equilibrium constant expression looks like this. K equals um, the, the products divided by the reactants, the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants, each one raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. So you can see these are your reactants over here. These are your products. So you're just going to put the products um, divided by the reactants. Um, the lowercase letters here are the stoichiometric coefficients. So when you're balancing, those are the numbers that go in front. Um, and you'll just raise each one of those concentrations to the, the correct stoichiometric coefficient. So let's get some practice writing some equilibrium constant expressions. Um, so for this reaction, you have here are your reactants, here are your products. So you're just going to do the products um, Hi squared over H2 times I2. Um, make sure that you're multiplying the reactants and you multiply the products if you have more than one um, and, and you don't add them. Instead, that's a common mistake. Uh, so down here, again, you want products divided by the reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficient. So if, if it's just one, then you don't have to worry about it. Just raised to the first power. Anything raised to the first power is just itself. All right, so let's try to apply um, this equilibrium constant expression to um, an equilibrium problem. So in sample exercise 15.2, we have if the equilibrium constant, if the equilibrium concentration of chlorine is five, and the equilibrium concentration of this guy is five at a particular temperature, you don't really have to worry about the temperature. Um, it's just that the they, they give it to you because the equilibrium constant will be different at different temperatures. So it's constant as long as you don't change the temperature. Um, at this particular temperature, this is what the equilibrium uh, constant looks like. And what they want you to do is find the equilibrium concentration of uh, carbon monoxide. So the first thing you should do whenever you see this K, whenever you see this equilibrium constant, set up an equilibrium constant expression. Um, so for this reaction, the equilibrium constant expression will look like this. K is the products again over the reactants. Um, there's only Each one has a stoichiometric coefficient of 1, so it's all raised to the first power. Uh, and in this problem, they tell you, if you go back up, they tell you that the concentration of, um, of both of the two of these oops, species, there we go, uh, is five. So you had here uh, chlorine, and this one is five. So you can plug that in down here. So this is five, this is five, and this is x. This is your unknown. And they tell you that the equilibrium uh, constant is a particular number. So it's, it's just 1.2 times 10 to the 3. And so you, you just have to solve for x. So you have uh, basically, these fives will cancel. So you can get these, yep, these fives will cancel here. This five cancels with that five. So you end up with 1 over x. So you have 1.2 times 10 to the 3 equals 1 over x. Well, you can multiply both sides by x. Multiply by x over here. And your x's cancel, and you're going to divide by the 1.2 times 10 to the 3, and you get this x is just 1 over 1.2 times 10 to the 3. And you work that out, and you just get 8.3 times 10 to the negative 4. So if you think about the equilibrium constant expression, it's just a number. Right? This, is, this is just a number, and it's telling you that once, the, um, once this expression is true, once the concentration of the products over the reactants equals this number, then you're at equilibrium. And so you can only put equilibrium concentrations into the equilibrium constant expression. So when you're approaching a problem like this, just set up your equilibrium constant expression, and then make sure you're putting your equilibrium concentrations in there. This also works for, for um, if they give you a Kp instead of Kc, then you would put the pressures in, the equilibrium pressures in there as well. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Kp. All right, so since pressure is proportional to concentration for gases, um, the equilibrium constant expression can also be written uh, in terms of pressure. So here you have your, uh, for this generalized reaction, you're going to have the products over the reactants again. But now instead of putting concentrations in, you're going to put the pressure. So there's this, this reads the pressure of C raised to the C power times the pressure of D raised to the D power, again, where the lowercase letters are your stoichiometric coefficients from your balanced chemical equation. And there is a relationship between Kp and Kc, so if you know one, you can figure out the other. Um, this is just a derivation. It might look a little scary, but it's really not that bad. Uh, if you don't like derivations, you don't care where these equations come from, you can just skip this part. And just go right down here. Kp is Kc times Rt raised to the delta n, where R is your ideal gas law, the 0.0821. T is your temperature in Kelvin, and delta n is the moles of gaseous product minus the moles of your gaseous reactants. 
and we'll, use, we'll do some uh, examples here. But here's where that, uh, this equation comes from. Um, so Kc is, again, products of reactants, right? You're going to put it, so that C just means concentration. So you're going to put your molar concentrations in here in, the, in those brackets. And this is what Kp looks like. It's just the pressure, so the products over the reactants. If you remember the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, you can solve it for P. P is just, so you just divide by V on both sides. So you get N over V times R times T. And remember what N over, N over V is? That's moles over liters or molar concentration. Right, that's just your big M. Or that's pretty much what we have in brackets over here. So this, this bracket C is the molar concentration of C. This bracket D is the molar concentration of D and so on. Um, so basically wherever you have N over V in here, it's, it's the same as what you have in the bracket. So for each one of these pressures, I'm going to substitute N over V times RT into your KP expression over here. So wherever I have P, I just do N over V times R times T. So that's what I have all over here. Um, N over V, N over V, and I, you know, this different, this, these are basically the moles of C over the, the volume's going to be the same because they're all in the same um, container. The only thing that's really changing is uh, the pressure and, and the number of moles. So if you simplify this a little bit, then you put this in brackets. You have your, remember N over V, is just whatever you had in brackets, so that's your bracket C times RT raised to the C, D RT raised to D, divided by the, the um, reactants on the bottom. And then you can factor out all of these. You see how you have like RT raised to the C and RT raised to the D. You can kind of factor that out. So you end up with um, C raised to the C over D raised to the D, divided by A to the A, B to the B, and then you have all these RT to the C, RT to the D, all, the, all this over here. Um, you can use the uh, one, a law of exponents. Um, if you have the same base raised to a different power, you can just add the powers. So do that on the top and the bottom. And then if you have the same base um, raised to different powers, one over the other, so if you're dividing them, you can, uh, so this will just be subtracting, then you can subtract the, the difference. Um, so this is wrong, this is supposed to be, sorry, minus A plus B over here, oops, minus A plus B, and that gives you your, your delta N. Delta N is basically C plus D um, minus A plus B over there. And so you, you, this this part, this um, this part is the same thing as KC, right? All of that is just KC. And so you have KC times RT to the delta n, or delta n, you're just looking at this, you just add up the moles of gaseous products, add up all the moles of, basically the coefficients, the stoichiometric coefficients, products minus reactants, and then you can figure out what delta n is. So let's try one of those. So for, here we go, for um, this reaction, we have 2SO3 yields 2SO2 plus an O2, so make sure you don't forget that O2 over there. They give you the Kc at a particular temperature, and they're asking for Kp. So we can use this equation, Kp is Kc times RT to the, to the delta N. Uh, and so all we really need to do is figure out what delta N is. Delta N is going to be um, products. So I have 1 here. So I have 2 plus a 1 gives me 3, 3 moles of my product. So I'm just adding up the stoichiometric coefficients of the products. That becomes 3. Um, and then my of my reactants, here I have two. So I'm going to have this, in case you can't do this in your head, there, that's three minus two gives me one. So my delta N is just going to be one in this case. So it's just, you just add up the moles of gaseous products, add up the moles of gaseous reactants, and then subtract products minus reactants. And so then you can plug it into this equation. You have Kc uh, and then multiply R times T raised to the delta N. Now make sure that you do R times T, raise that to the delta N, and then multiply by Kc. The Kc is not um, raised to any kind of power. And so you end up with 0.335.